Hi, I'm Scientific Illustrator Stephanie Razzo. Welcome to Nature Sketch Grades Go Out and Sketch a Cedar Waxwing instructional video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to sketch a cedar waxwing by applying what you learned in your step by step lesson. You can follow along with this lesson even if you don't have the lesson crate. You can help this tiny business by shopping for lesson crates at naturesketchcrate.com, clicking that like button, and subscribing to the YouTube channel. First, make sure you have all the materials you need before you go out to sketch. Go out and sketch a cedar waxwing or something similar at a museum, zoo, park, garden, or even from an HD video at home. Today, I'm sketching from a composite video of a cedar waxwing for demonstrative purposes. Remember, this is just a sketch. It's meant to be relaxing and fun. Take your time observing nature and painting, and don't get too caught up with accuracy. Let's get started. So first you want to decide how you want the bird placed on your page. So you'll want to think about size and positioning. And then when you decide that you want to use simple shapes to make sure the bird actually fits. So you might want to draw a line to give you an idea of where you want that bird to sit. So it's kind of at an angle from bill down to the tip of the tail. And my angle might be wrong, so I'm use a nice light mark. And I wanna keep the bird within this, so from bill to tail tip, so that it doesn't get too big for my page. So you can use circles and ovals to start defining the different parts of the bird. It's still using very light marks and not being too exact, just kind of get an idea of where that bird is placed and about how big it is. So this is about the size that the body takes. And then I'll have maybe part of the wing here and then the tail. I'll kind of use some simple shapes to put that in and then maybe start defining these parts of the wing. and there, and a lot might change. My sizing when I first start is not going to be correct. It's going to be off and that is totally fine. That's why I'm using very light marks to start. And then I'll start adding in maybe the head part. And let's see, probably about here, using just simple shapes. So I have a half circle here for the head. And then the eye kind of curves up with the bill curving out like that, using some simple shapes again to get all of that marked in. So a lot of this, again, might not be in the right proportion and I'll probably have to fix it but I'll use some slightly darker marks to fix that. And I think I'm going to start, now that I have the basic bird on my page, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding in the face first. So the eye and the bill. So I'm gonna add the eye here. I'm gonna kind of determine where it longs first. So I'm using the other parts of the head, the bill here and the chin and throat area to kind of determine where that eye might be placed. So make sure it's in the right position. It's very important with birds. And the near positioning can help with this as well. And drawing in a circle. And then I'll draw in this mask shape to help me determine if that's in the right spot. So there's a little shape in front here and the bill, and I'm gonna define the bill a little bit more because that'll help me decide if that eye is in the right place. I'm using slightly darker marks. And 
I'm just starting to define the outside shape of that bill. And I think the eye is a little bit too far to the right, so I use some slightly darker marks and move it to the left a little bit. And I'm looking at this shape. right here to help me determine that in relation to the nair. You can draw some lines to check yourself. And then it might be helpful even to kind of finish that eye. Sometimes I find when sketching, if I draw in that eye, it can help me determine if that looks right or not. And I think that's close enough. This is just a sketch and I don't want to get too caught up with the accuracy. I just want it to still look like a bird. And sometimes if you get the eye in the wrong spot, it just doesn't look like a bird. So then I'm going to start drawing in the rest of this mask. And I'll add in the crest. Just a little white stripe here. And then the crest. And again, a half circle here, and then some lines going up, not being super exact, and I can change this still. The crest is a little bit higher than I initially drew, so I'm just using some darker marks to determine those lines. So say this is the line I'm gonna follow, and then drawing in some new lines here. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time erasing because I'm gonna cover this with paint and I'm not going to see a lot of the lines, these lighter marks. And this is a sketch, so it kind of makes it fun to look at having the sketchy marks in underneath the paint. And if you're out sketching an animal in the wild, you might not get very far on sketching, first of all, so don't get discouraged. And you'll have to rely on a lot that you already know about the bird from your step-by-step -step to kind of fill in the blanks. But you also need to work fast. So this painting method and the sketching method help so you can work faster. And the more you do it, the faster you'll get at it too. And the more accurate you'll end up being practice really helps. Since you've already done the step-by-step -step lesson and practiced drawing this bird, a little more familiar with it should be a little bit easier, but probably be still a challenge until you get the hang of sketching from a moving animal. Now, animals are very unpredictable. They can move at any time and leave. So being able to draw something quickly and paint quickly really can be helpful. So now I'm starting to find some of these shapes. So I have the coverts and I'm still using pretty light marks because maybe my sizing is wrong on that. And I want to be able to change that if I need to. Then I have the secondaries here, and I'm just gonna draw in a shape for those. And I'm relating that to the uh, rump here and for positioning and size. So I'm kind of looking at those and thinking, okay, it's about this far down the bird. The coverts start right where the rump kind of starts here on this bird. In this position so I can draw that in and then there's an angle that goes right up this way and then I can fill in some of this and then it gives me space to figure out where those primaries go so it helps me with that angle as well and it kind of goes up a little bit and then it curves 
some of those feathers kind of curve out just a little bit. So that gives me a lot of space to kind of figure out where these groups of feathers are. And there's a, an area right here between here that I can see a shape, this kind of lighter tan, and then there was darker and then lighter. And that'll help me with painting too, to kind of separate these out. And that also helps me with placement of the secondaries. And so there's one big one here, and then the others, there's a lot showing of that one. I mean, not a big one. And then there's others that are showing underneath. And I'm not gonna get too carried away with how many or placement. It's going to add them in in a very generalized space. And I have this area that I'm working with that has those And I can look at this space and say, okay, these secondaries stop right about here, right about a little bit above where this white area is. So I can draw in that shape and I don't even need to add those feathers. I can just add some lines to represent those feathers because I probably won't have time to even get this far. And then it's important to note the, uh, little wax tips so I'm going to start adding those in because I think that that's a really fun feature of this particular animal and if I don't get the right amount of tips that's okay uh, just add a few in the positioning might not be quite right and then I can start adding in these primary feathers and again I'm not going to try to be too exact with it. I'm just going to get a representation of that, maybe adding a few lines. It's still going to look like a bird. You don't have to get all of the feathers exactly right. And you probably won't have time with a moving bird to get them right anyway. And knowing a little bit about bird wings can help. Just get a basic idea of that in there and it'll look good. So I want to refine this a little bit because it looks a little, a little bit strange to me. Make sure I follow the right pattern here for these coverts. That looks a little bit better. It might end up being a little wonky. It is just a sketch. So I have, I have, again, this line to help me figure out where things are. So this white area, the undertail coverts, I'm looking at that as a shape in relation to the wing, and it does kind of end right here as well. So this primary feathers here. And then I can get the tail the right size. So it starts, the tail tip starts just a little bit beyond the undertail coverts. And I can draw a little line for those. And they kind of blend in this video. And I'm sure if you were in person, they kind of blend together. So I'm not going to be really exact. I'm just gonna kind of add a few in. And there's a couple on the outside that look a little longer and like shorter in the center. And I think that's important to note more than the number of feathers here. And one or two lines will be enough to kind of give you an idea of that. Maybe even making that a little smaller. So now my bird has a lot of detail in it and I don't need much more. This is great. This is a, not exact, it's plenty of detail, even maybe more than enough. So I'm gonna add in the branch. And I can determine where this little knot in the branch is based on where these 
chest feathers are, so they kind of curve up and the knot on the branch goes about here. Again, using kind of light marks and just lots of sketchy marks to get those lines in. And then I can determine where the toe is. It's kind of underneath all of those little wax tips there. Just draw it in. And then there's a little knot there, which may or may not be important, but I'm adding it in real quick. And then draw in the lower part of the abdomen there or the belly. About this far down from this white space in between where the secondaries are and the primaries, you can kind of see this is about where this leg is. So I'm looking at the wing to figure out where the leg goes. And then I'll just add in a little bit more of the branch and that'll be plenty of the branch. Maybe I'll just add the other side of it a little bit here. And I like how this drawing looks. So actually, yeah, just a little bit here. And I can alter this drawing a little bit when I do the ink lines as well. And like I said, it's not exact. It's just a representation of this bird. And just wanted to add these lines in because this is white and this is gray and I don't want to mess up painting that. And now I'm going to go ahead and add in the common name and scientific name because that's what I like to add in to my drawings. But you can add in things like observations on the outside in addition to the scientific name and common name if you want. You can add a little bit about how you were feeling, how creating this drawing made you feel, how spending time in nature made you feel, anything about the drawing that wasn't quite right but you had to move on to adding paint due to time or uh, how long the bird was sitting there it's up to you this is your sketch and your journal so make sure to make it your own and you have this white space here to add to making it your own in addition to the drawing itself and if you want, you don't have to draw the entire bird. You can zoom in and just draw the head or focus on the wing and adding the details there or focus on the feet. So you don't have to do one thing. You can do uh, a focus on one part instead of the entire. So it's up to you. So I'm gonna, for me, I'm gonna go ahead and write in for consistency, cedar waxwing. and the scientific name. And now I could either erase some of these lines with my kneaded eraser needed to a light gray spot or lighten them a little bit by just dabbing right over them. But I like leaving the sketchy lines. It reinforces the idea that this is just a sketch and it, adds, it makes it kind of fun. So now I'm gonna move on to adding some paint. So I'm going to add some paint using the paints I saved from my step-by-step -step lesson so I don't have to think too much about the colors. And I think 
think it's always nice to reuse them. Sometimes they might not be quite as vibrant as initially. So I always make sure I have my paints with me to add a little bit more just in case they're not bright or vibrant enough after you revive them, which is sometimes the case. So I'm going to paint this in the same way I painted the step-by-step, -step, well, as closely as possible to it. So I'm gonna start just like with our step-by-step -step with the wettest, lightest gray-black. I'm gonna add that, I'm gonna maybe make that a little lighter. I also need a little bit more water. You can see how it's kind of getting stuck on the paper. And here it's just flowing, filling in that space. You can add water to your palette by squeezing on your water brush or taking some water from whatever vessel you're holding water in if you're using a regular paintbrush. You don't have to use a water brush for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in all these spaces, this light gray color, this mask in the eye, bill, and then into the body. Maybe I'll start at the tail and move the paint up since it does get lighter in gray. And, and here it's still pretty dark and it's starting to get pretty light. So I'm going to lighten the paint on my brush by letting a little bit of pigment off onto my towel and then continuing to paint up into the nape here. And I'll pick up a little bit more and here the wing uh, primary projections are the darkest so I'm going to add the paint there first and these secondaries are pretty dark too right here and I'm going to avoid the little wing tips much as possible. And I put in this line so I'll remember to stop there with the gray. So there is some white on the other side. And I'm going to bring the gray just like we did with the step by step under where this it's a little too dark, so it's a dab off on my towel. But I'm going to go ahead and bring that paint over the top of this wing here where these coverts are. clean off my brush and then I'm going to add in the yellow color so I'll pick up a little bit of that make sure it's vibrant, vibrant enough and that it flows with enough water to add it to it I don't want it to get stuck on my page so I'll clean off my brush pick up a little bit more this bottom part here is gonna look be the darkest yellow so it's a little lighter as it goes up the bird's body towards the head. So I'm going to add this yellow in here. And then I'm going to clean off my brush. Take that clean damp brush, just move that paint up. It's still a little dark, so I'm going to dab my brush and then just kind of paint right over it. And that creates a nice little gradient. So it's darker here and then lighter here. And I'm going to bring that all the way up. And if it's not, if I'm not getting dark enough, it's still wet, I can move some of that paint into that area. Next, I'm going to add the rusty color. Check it out here. It looks a little light. So I'm going to add a little bit more to my palette. Maybe just one drop. And I might need to add a little bit of water to that too. See how it's not moving too well, I'll show you on the paper. It's kind of getting stuck just a tiny bit. Doesn't need a lot of water, just a little, make it flow a little bit better. And again, I'm adding this water to my palette, not to my paper. And the more water there is to the paint pigment, it's gonna make it lighter. Um, and if you just add a little bit, it's not going to change the pigment too much. So there's a little bit too much water to paint pigment here. 
and now it's a darker color now that I added some more pink pigment to it in my palette. So it's a drier color because it doesn't have as much water to it and it has more pink pigment. So I think that color works and it's flowing well enough. I'm going to add it here to the crest. On the crest right in the bottom is the darkest part. I don't want to get too dark. I'm going to add some here as well. Maybe a little bit here. And then I'm going to clean my brush and then just use that because I don't want it to get too dark. I'm going to use a clean damp brush to kind of move that paint over that space. And then down into the chest area here. Where I see it on my bird that I'm looking at in front of me. And I'm not being super exact. As you can see, there's a lot of little white spaces left. This is just a sketch. I'm just getting it in the same general space. I'm going to add this to this part of the bird as well. And since this is a little darker on the back of the head, I'm going to add a little bit more paint there, even though it's wet. I've already added paint in that space. I'm going to add it one more time and then just kind of paint over into the back and these coverts as well. And that the paint is just gradually running out. And I can even while it's still wet add a little bit more here. So it's still darker. And then use that clean damp brush to add a gradient down into the wing and the back of the burn. And this branch is gray and then this kind of brownish color. And I think I'm going to add in the brownish color first. And I'm just going to add it kind of roughly all over the branch. Because it's kind of a mottled colored branch and that gives it kind of that mottled look. I need to add in some gray to these feet. So I'm gonna add that in now. And the nails and the legs. I should add a little that color right here. A little bit more here. It's darker under here, so I'm going to add a little bit more on that part. Clean off my brush. And now I'm going to start adding a little bit of a darker gray black color. And I'll test out on my paper first. Looks good. And I want to add it looking at the bird in front of me and using my step by step. I'm going to add it to the tail here. And clean off my brush because I don't want to have such a hard edge. Soften those edges with a little bit of a clean damp brush there and bring a little bit more of that gray color into the back of the bird. And then I'm going to add it to the wing feathers as well. I'm going to add it to the darker areas. dab off my brush because it gets kind of a soft line here and a gradient of lighter gray in the back towards the back of the burn. And I'd say this area the same. There's a little bit of darker gray through here. And then this actually is a little bit of that rusty color in this burn. I'm going to dab off my brush and get a little bit of that, making it a little darker, but not too dark. But I want that soften those lines a little bit here. Taking that clean, damp brush and going over it will soften those lines a little bit. Not a lot. See, they're still kind of here. That kind of mimics the video I'm watching. I'm going to add it into the mask area.
defining the space of the nair a little bit better. And then also to this area under the beak, the lower part of the bill. And there's a little bit of a gradient into the chin and throat area, so I'm gonna clean damp brush and pull some of that paint down into there. And even into the chest here. And I'll just gradually run out. And I'm gonna add a little bit here a darker shadowed area. Clean off my brush and then soften that edge a bit and bring that up as a gradient into the bird. A little bit of this rusty color in these wing feathers so I'm going to add that in and because of probably the light and even in here. So I'm going to add that in. There's a little bit more here as well. I'm going to start adding that in where I see it and soften those edges now that the paint ran out. And this is still wet, so I don't really want to touch that. I'm going to add a little bit more here in the crest in a lined motion. A little darker here at the bottom. And it gets a little too dark to tap off. Your brush on your towel and then keep going. I'm going to do the gray again on the branch. So I'm going to use the same kind of method I used before, kind of modeling it, not working too hard, kind of sketching it in there real quick, giving it just a little bit of texture. As the paint runs out, I'm just kind of moving it over the entire thing. I don't want any lines to be quite too hard. Now, even though it's still wet, I'm going to add in a shadow because I want it to kind of bleed into the other color. Darken that part. I'm going to add a little bit of a harder line up here on the top. straighten some of those lines out. Clean off my brush. I'm going to take some time to kind of look and see if I've missed some colors, but I'm going to add a little bit more to the feet. The legs and the feet pretty dark, so I'm going to add that in right now. I'm trying to preserve some of the light color, but not working too hard at it because most of it is dark, but this where its nails are pretty light, so I'll just kind of outline the nails a little bit. And if you want, you can wait to do that with your pen. So you don't have to do that right now. There's a lot more light on this other foot, so I'm not going to paint as much right there. I'm going to add a bit of this really dark color into the mask and the eye. And just to give myself an idea of how big that eye is, because I don't want to make it too small when I paint in the mask. Um, and go ahead and just add that in there. And here I got a little bit too close to the eye. Just going to give myself a little more space on that side. So it's okay. It's just a sketch. And I'll define all of that a little bit more when I add the ink lines. And I could even have waited to put all of that in with the ink lines. I didn't have to do it now. And then I'm going to get the dark color here. And into the chin. Again, dabbing my brush and taking that clean wet brush on the edge of that paint to kind of bring it into the chin here and the throat and 
in the breast, chest area, creating a little bit of a gradient there, softening those edges a bit. And there's some darker, harder lines right here and right here. And add a little bit of this rusty color to mimic those lines there. And then right underneath the crest here. Adding in those darker areas will help this image pop off the page a little bit more. And I think that works for this sketch. It's about all that I need for a sketch. And so I'll stop here with the paint. If I want to add more paint to this later, I can do it after adding the ink lines too, if I really want to. Adding ink lines. So you want to make sure your image is dry first. If it looks dry, you can test that it is actually dry by just kind of dabbing your finger over it. And if it doesn't pick up any of that paint or it doesn't feel wet, then it is dry, ready to go. So I like to start with the smallest micron so that I can redefine any lines that I need to redefine. And it's much easier if you make a mistake using this micron to fix it with a slightly larger ink line later. So I'm gonna go through and redraw the lines kind of based on where the paint landed. So I want this eye to be fixed since it's driving me crazy. So I'm going to fix that first. I'm going to just define where that eye is. And I'm kind of drawing on the outside because I don't want to make it any smaller than it already is. And that's where having the smaller micron helps because if I had a really big, thick line, I wouldn't be able to redefine that line properly. I will start to define this area, which I didn't define a lot when I was drawing it. So I'm going to add that in right now a little bit more. And again, this is where having that thin line, redrawing this, it's kind of like when we started with the really light marks, still fixable and adjustable since it's very thin. And it also allows you to add kind of these light feather marks. Kind of mimic some of those lines. And you don't have to reline everything. You can just kind of add some lines here and there so you can leave some spaces blank if you like. If these area these feathers down here are really delicate. So I add some more lines here, but I'm not gonna add these lines there. So it's up to you. The beak has hard lines, so I'm going to redraw those lines, of course. And I can resize the beak if I cut it a little off here. Here I'm not drawing this line, I'm actually going to draw some feather lines in instead, using that line as a base. And I'm not even redrawing all these lines. And then draw some of these feather lines. I'm paying attention to the direction that they are on the bird this time. tips stand out by outlining them. And I think that's as much detail as this part of the wing needs. Keeping it really low key and fast. It still takes a long time. 
and this is just a sketch. This is where I might want to add more paint, just a little bit darker here to mimic that shadow a little bit better, but I'll do that after I add everything else. So I think that works pretty good for this side of my micron. And now I'll move on to the slightly larger micron, just to add any lines that I think are still kind of on the delicate side, but that need a little bit more, they need to stand out just a tiny bit more. So around the eye, it's not really all white, so I'm gonna add some little grooves in here, some little lines. Maybe thicken up, widen that a little bit more. And I think the feet, I don't really wanna give them that huge thick line. I don't want them to stand out too much. But I think this little line here works pretty good. If I change my mind, I can add those lines in. Maybe add a few more here into the wing to define it a little bit more. I'm keeping a lot of edges soft. That's probably about it. I'm going to add in the scientific name with this pen too. Lastly, it's I think the most fun because it's big thick lines, I'm going to add in the biggest micron lines, the 08 black micron lines. I'm going to start over here with the common name. I'll make it a little thicker than that tip by running my pen over it a little bit. And then anywhere that I think needs a little bit extra definition, like here under the beak, it needs to be redefined a bit. And then this branch line definitely needs to be darker. This line can stay light. And I might not need to add that extra paint since I added this really dark branch line. And when you draw these lines, you need to make sure to let it dry before you run your hand over it. You might smudge it. I still think that this wing line needs to be a bit darker, so I'm going to add that in too. And some more definition there. And then maybe on the bottom part of the tail, and then right here there's a dark space. And I think I want to just add that in there to mimic that. And then it's a little darker over the eye. I'm going to darken that up. And darker to me and I don't really think it needs a lot more I don't really want the feet to stand out too much and I really don't want anything else I want to keep this more on a delicate side maybe that it's because of my mood today or every time I paint I tend to paint just a little bit different depending on how I'm feeling and I am going to add a little bit more of that dark color to the branch because I just want it to have a little bit more depth to this image. And since that's dry, it doesn't take very long. You know, a little more water. You can add that in right there. And I could have dabbed it off onto my towel to make sure it didn't get too dark. But I want to add a lot of the color, so I'm just kind of adding it over the branch. I don't want to add really hard lines. I want them to be a little softer, starting a little dark there. I can even add, dip it off on my towel that time. Maybe I didn't need to. When you add paint to a wet area, it does bleed through, or you can just kind of move it around with your brush a little bit too. I'm going to add a little bit more of the shadow of this bird. I'm really looking at it now. And while this is wet, I can continue to work adding that shadow in if I want to. 
and maybe it was good the way it was maybe I'm overworking it but also I think it looks good now I like I like that and now I think I'm done make sure to use this white space for your observations maybe write in what you noticed about the bird what you felt about your process of creating this painting or anything that you didn't think quite worked out or anything you really liked about it or how you made you feel about the bird itself. Thank you for joining me. Great job observing your world and keep practicing. If you have any questions or would like to see any plant or animal featured in a future lesson, please leave it in the comments below. Make sure to share your art on our Facebook fan art page and use the hashtag NatureCreateArt to have it featured on our social media. Thanks again. Please like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and shop for future crates at NatureSketchCrate.com.